Hi everyone, it's Betty Russo with North Jersey Lifestyle and Real Estate and co-manager of Realty Executives in Oakland, New Jersey. Welcome to episode number 29 of my show where I'm going to share some tips with you on touring homes for sale. First things first, before touring homes, meet with your real estate agent for a buyer consultation. Be sure to include a list of your wants and your must-haves so that your agent is clear on what you're looking for in a home. Be sure to listen to some of your agent's recommendations because although you've probably seen everything you're going to be looking at online already, Sometimes internet pictures can be deceiving and they're not always so great. Woof. Another thing you need to do right in the beginning is get a pre-approval for a mortgage if you're planning on paying for your new home with a mortgage. This way, you know exactly what you can afford, there's no guessing, and you're not looking at homes that you can't afford, and you're not looking at homes that are less than you can afford. Find a trusted mortgage advisor. I'm sure your realtor can set you up with one if you need and get that approval right away. It has to go in with your offer anyway, so you need to have it up front. This way you're ready as soon as you find your dream home. Take a look at the areas that you think you might like. Narrow down to a few towns. This way you're not going crazy all over the state looking for your dream home. Narrow it down to your towns, look into those towns, look at the school systems, look at the taxes, drive around, look at the neighborhoods, try and figure out what you like in advance of shopping. This way you're not blindly looking for something that may be in an area that's not for you anyway. Once you've picked a few homes that you like to see, Take a ride, drive by them. Do you like them from the outside? Do you like the neighborhood? Is it within close proximity to where you work? Or is it a good traveling distance to where you work or where your extended family is? Check out all of those things in advance, but especially start driving by the homes because the home may be in an area that doesn't work for you for work for whatever reason. You may want a neighborhood feel. The home could be on a busy street. Now that's okay for some people, but it might not be okay for you. So it's definitely a good idea to do a drive-by. During showings, see beyond the things that can be changed. Paint, it's not a big deal, it's just paint. You can change the color anytime. Flooring, also easy to change. Look beyond the seller's taste in furniture and decor. None of that is going to make any difference to you. So look beyond what can be changed and will be changed. And also be sure to look at things that can't be changed. And ask yourself if you can live with them. If there's something about the yard that can't be changed, say, for example, the yard is smaller than you want, and maybe there's a rock wall in the back, and you really can't do much about that unless you're going to have the rock blasted out, um, ask yourself if you can live with that, if that's going to work for you. But again, back to the things that can be changed, try to ignore it. Sometimes it's hard for people to envision what this space will look like with those things present, but your real estate agent can help you with that. Um, anything that can be changed should not be a determination factor in your decision making process. Are you looking at homes that are fixer uppers? Um, are you interested in a fixer upper? Are you interested in something that doesn't require that much work or something that's move in ready? If you're looking at fixer uppers and you are someone who is willing to do a little bit of work but not much, and the home you're looking at requires a lot of work, especially if you're not a contractor, you might want to think twice about this. Just know what you're getting into and make sure that it's appropriate for you. Bring all of the decision makers with you when you go looking at homes. Leave the non-decision makers 
at home because honestly, although everyone means well, a lot of people like to bring their parents or their siblings or their friends, although they all mean well, it's you that has to live in the house. It's you that has to love the house. Sometimes a lot of opinions can get very confusing and can actually deter you from the house that you really want and that you can really see yourself in. So bring the decision makers, leave everyone else at home. Don't look at more than five houses during your outing. Looking at too many houses can get very confusing and overwhelming. If you're looking at 10 houses, by the time you're on number nine or 10, you don't remember anything about number one. Um, definitely keep it to five. I've taken out folks that want to see more homes than, than that, and I can tell you for sure that it does get confusing and tiring too. Seeing a bunch of homes takes a lot more time than you would think. So try to keep it to five. That's your best bet for remembering everything that you see and for being able to take it all in. If you go to an open house or if you see a house that you're interested in, make sure to funnel everything through your agent if you're working with a buyer's agent. Don't go to an open house and ask the agent that's sitting that open house questions about the house. Don't give them your information for them to follow up with you. Give them your, your real estate agent's business card or the, your real estate agent's phone number. Let your real estate agent follow up with them with any questions that you have. This way, there's no confusion. There's no question upon who is representing you as your agent. That's always the best way to go. Last but not least, I'm sure, don't talk about the house while you're in the house. Wait until you get outside. These days, lots of homes have security cameras. And although the sellers should make tentative buyers aware of that because it is an intrusion of privacy or it could be viewed that way, you really should just beware that anybody can be listening at any time and you should never talk about how much you love a house while you're in the house or how much you don't like the house. You don't want to insult the sellers and you don't want to let them know how much you love it because then they know they have something on you. So in all fairness, not to be rude to sellers or mean in any way, but you and your agent need to look out for your best interests and talking about your likes and dislikes while you're inside the house is never in your best interest. Keep that private and wait till you leave. Well, that's it for today. If you have any more questions on what you need to do when looking for homes, if you want to look for homes and you're not represented by a real estate agent, I'd be happy to help you. Reach out to me personally. You can send me a message. You can text me, call me, email me, whatever works for you. I'd be happy to help. And thank you for joining me. I look forward to seeing you again next week. Bye.